What's up, everybody? How does a biohacker, or should a biohacker, consume alcohol? Most often way for a biohacker to consume alcohol. Okay, well look, if you're a true biohacker, then this is what I would say. Number one, first and foremost, and this can take care of a lot, because the quantity takes, the quantity that you, that you drink will take care of itself in, if, if you follow this. Have a limit, know your limit, and unyieldingly, stop when it's your limit. You have a no deviate um, policy from your limit. Do not deviate from your limit at all. How do you identify a limit? A limit should be identified by the accompanying state of your brain uh, prior to the limit and up to the limit. Meaning, if the moment that you start to slur, the moment that noticeably the moment that you your your general processing starts to decline cognitive processing starts to decline the moment that your you know your, your pupils start to dilate the moment that you lose empathy for people around you you know so many fights in couples can be attributed to fucking alcohol that's it you know i've seen it all my life and it's, it's just so stupid that people do this to themselves and then think they have relationship problems yeah like there's one and it's excessive booze um uh, know when you are about to lose your control over your actions and become impulsive, saying shit you don't mean, you know, randomly reaching out and texting an ex or something, uh, stuff like that. Impulsivity, right? The moment you start to get impulsive, you've reached your limit. So what you have to do is you have to look at all those things understand when they're starting to fail, when you're starting to lose empathy for people and lose empathy for things and say things you wouldn't other, otherwise say that you look at sober the next day and be like, I, I never, I never would have said that. I, I never would have said that shit. Um, where your cognitive decline starts processing, you got to know when it's happening because you know, you've crossed the threshold before and you have to stop when you know that another drink is going to take you into that place. Okay. That's number one. If you follow that and have a limit and have like a no deviate policy from that limit, and that is discipline, my friends, discipline. Feel good about yourself because you stopped. Then uh, I think the quantities will take care of themselves, whether it's a bottle of wine for you or six beers or four beers or two shots or six shots, whatever the limit is, you know, for people, obviously people have different tolerances and, you know, the quantity works it, it, itself out. The thing to remember, the, the other thing about being a biohacker and consuming alcohol is you have to have constraints in place that will cause you pain if you drink too much alcohol. Alcohol is interesting on how it binds to GABA receptors and makes you feel really good and triggers dopamine release, makes you feel really good. Because when you stop drinking it, you, you it starts to clear your blood pretty quick. And so you are not, you're gonna start feeling less good than you did at the peak of your drink consumption the moment it starts coming down. And you have to know that that you have to be prepared to deal with that. You know, you can't be there like, okay, I, I have stopped drinking and now I'm starting to feel less good than I did. Time for another drink to keep that going. That is the wrong answer. And that is gonna keep you drinking alcohol. Alcohol is tricky. Puts you in a state where pretty much only alcohol can 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 get you back right if you drink way too much you have a hangover you know obviously recovery will get you back but quicker alcohol will get you feeling normal again that's that's why hair of the dog exists right so you have to be particularly careful and understand that you need to control alcohol rather than having alcohol control you because it fucking will absolutely control you if you don't have these constraints in place but constraints look Everybody has weight loss goals, right? Or physique goals, you know? Have that constraint. Do you have a goal for your body, what it should look like? Do you know your calorie maintenance number? Or roughly how much you can eat and drink and still lose weight or, or stay the same? Let your necessity to not gain weight and fuck up your physique goals keep you from going over your limit. Have constraints, right? Are you going to see your wife or girlfriend in a little bit? Is she coming home or he coming home? Are you going to their house? And they don't like when you drink too much. Allow that to be a constraint to stop you so that you don't show up with dilated pupils and you're fucking half drunk and you're slurring your words and you're a totally different person. 
You do not want to be doing that. Getting behind the wheel. Let that be a constraint. Look, cops are out. And you make you make one wrong fucking move, man. Don't use your signal somewhere. You don't yield correctly. You're speeding over seven to 10 miles an hour over the limit. Yeah, and, and a cop needs to make quota, he's gonna pull your ass over. And sometimes you might not check, depending on how, you, how you're reacting and how you seem, whether or not you've been consuming alcohol, but other times he or she will. And if they do, guess what? You're fucked. DUI, okay? You don't want any of those. I've had too many people close to me get DUIs because they just couldn't control their intake. You do not want to fucking drive a car when you've had too much fucking alcohol. You do not want to do it. Do not do it. Okay, so that, if you use all those constraints essentially, and you're conscious of when you start to become someone else, you start to lose empathy, you're more argumentative, you're more snappy, you're more impulsive, and you stop at the point where you don't get to those levels, everything else takes care of itself. That's how biohackers deal with alcohol. In addition to that, on the come down, right? You drink alcohol, GABA raises, don't mean fires, you feel good. That come down, you won't feel as good, right? So how do you address that? Water, of course, yeah, but that's really sort of primitive. Salt water would be better, Himalayan salt water, or anything that you can get salt and water at the same time in. A B complex is even better than that. And a really, really nutrient dense uh, meal is super optimal for that nutrient dense, but also macronutrient dense, macro and micronutrient dense, you know, get some fat, get some carbs, get some protein, get it all right. And satisfy yourself, uh, satisfy until, you know, you're, you're, you're sated enough. You do all that and you can successfully drink alcohol, never get drunk, you know, never get too buzzed, be perfectly fine to drive. Never say shit you don't, you don't mean you're going to fucking regret the next day. And you're like, what the fuck's wrong with me? To your wife, husband, cat, you know? Uh, you never put your body in a place where it's having a heavy load to detox. You never do any of that. You never put yourself in the place where, you, where you're gaining too much fat because you consume too many calories, too many beer calories or wine calories. They're the worst. You know, drink clear liquor, by the way. And maybe a little bit of wine or a beer and stick with it. Um... You never go overboard and you never do any of those things. That is the way that a biohacker should drink alcohol. Um, I need to say the last thing is take a couple days off a week, you know. Yeah, do that. Two, three days, don't drink at all. Get back to normal. Get your state back to normal. Get your brain functioning normal. I'm telling you, man, neurotransmitter systems, very, very delicate. Very, very fragile. You know, you pump something in there too long, too consistently, you, you, you will always deal with the downstream effect. Now, those of us uh, experienced in the realm of biohacking and neurochemistry, self-experimentation, we understand how to reverse some of those changes quicker with chemicals, nootropics, supplements, or otherwise. Uh, but either way, yeah, there's always a downstream effect. You never get a fucking free lunch. That's a Tim Ferriss quote, okay? on uh, chemicals. Hope that makes sense. Thanks so much for watching. Remember guys, two new products. Number one, how to perfect your nootropic stacks. Fast, digital downloadable guide. Simple, relatively short, to the point, extremely valuable. You probably save five years just reading that guide and then use it, formulating stacks with the knowledge in that guide and then adjusting stacks to make them perfectly with the knowledge in that guide. You'll save a, you'll save a lot of money and you'll save a lot of time. Uh, that's a digital book. Get it, get it at livecortex.com. For those of you in uh, post pharma medication for depression or anxiety, and your brain is in a debilitated state, it will stay there if we do not modify neurochemistry and get it back to normal. We have a service to help you get your life back and get your brain back to normal in those states. It's called the Jumpstart Recovery Protocol. Okay, get that at livecortex.com. Those are the new things that we just launched and you can find them on the homepage of livecortex.com. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Talk to you next time.